So DevOps is not only for IT players. Today, I'm going to tell you the story of my own DevOps culture discovery in a telco world. It's true that we do have several IT players in the world well known, like uh, Google, Spotify, or others. And most of them are already in a DevOps model. But in our telecommunication networks, it's a bit different. We don't have the same constraints. And um, as we are deploying some hardware, software, selling some services to our customer, it's a bit more complicated to, go to get to there, but we are coming now. And um, in, um, in our campus, Nokia campus in Lanyon, we started to, uh, to try DevOps, and this is what I'm going to tell you today. But maybe most of you don't know where Lanyon is. If you don't, maybe you know my famous cousin there. These guys, Asterix and the Obelix, uh, are coming from the same village as me. We are all of us coming from France. And in the west part of France, there is a small village. This is where Lanyon is as well, in the, like in the, in the cartoon. And this is where we are having our campus there. So now that you know a bit more about where I'm coming from, um, I would like to set a few rules for the, for the speech today. And I would like to uh, exchange with you. So I'm going to, instead of asking you to switch off your phone, I'm going to ask you to use it to interact. And um, if you could use your, your smartphone and go to this HTTPS app.claxon.com, it's just a website. And uh, by entering this code, you will be able to uh, interact with me. So the first question that I'm going to ask you is, are you coming from Dev or from Ops? So basically, um, while we are talking about uh, Dev and Hubs, um, Dev is mainly about uh, R&D and um, R&D stuff, while this is a demo effect. Nobody is getting there yet. Uh, Dev is mo mostly R&D guys, while Hubs, it's um, several other activities, several other jobs. Like, um, ah, okay, <laughs> it's coming. <laughs> uh, we have the all, all the activities like sales, pre sales, program manager, technical product managers, we have solution engineers. Uh, we do have a lot of, uh, of activities like care, maintenance activities. Uh, everything is what we are calling, what we are calling ops. Us is also uh, mainly famous in our uh, customer organization. Yeah. Ah, yeah. Okay. Let me come back to this. I will give you a few, few minutes, a few seconds for that. So, even if you don't know yet, if you're still a student and you don't know if you're dev or hops, you can, of course, just uh, put what you are willing to do, what you are willing to, uh, to, to be uh, in the future. So, as we are in a code dive, I have an idea of what would be the result, but let's see. Is, is it okay for most of you now? Let's try that. Okay, good. I can see that uh, I'm going to... Okay, some, some of you are already playing, it's good. We are having some gig guys there. Okay. It's okay now. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's good to see that most of you are going from dev, but few of you are still coming from ops, which is good. So that means that we have several good guys there from ops, and I'm part of all of these good guys from ops. Uh, because uh, <laughs> obviously I'm coming from the ops side. And a uh, uh, few words about that. I'm um, um, in telecommunication network science uh, 17 years now, and uh, I've been working in a uh, Alcatel, Catel Lucent, now Nokia. And during the first 10, part of 10 years of my career, I have been working in um, customer side. I was traveling all around the world to uh, deploy some uh, telecommunication networks. Um, he started with a fixed uh, fix line. You know, these whole phones that your grandmother is still having. Uh, then we went to the mobile line, mobile networks, and to next generation one when the IT IP came in these networks. The things we didn't change during all this year, on, during all the technology, is that 
basically, our job in Ops is to take some R&D product and to implement it in, um, in a customer environment. And um, this is uh, basically what we are doing. And there is a lot of different environment on the customer side, while there is always different um, a billing system, a different provisioning system, a different management system, many, many different network elements in customer environment, different IP structure, different architecture. So a lot of different constraints. And our job is to adapt all the product coming from R&D to these uh, customer constraints. Okay, good. Oh, of course, I should change the screen now. So, now, this is the agenda for our presentation today. Um, I would like to start with back to the context, and I will explain you how my uh, DevOps experience started in, uh, in Lion. Uh, then we'll go to our first experience. In fact, it was an internal project that we had uh, internally in uh, Nokia Lion. And um, I will explain you about what, what we did and how we did it. Uh, next thing is that we had a successful try with uh, one of our partners. And uh, it was a, it's a customer to which we, we did a test uh, with, uh, with DevOps. And I'm going to, uh, to have a few, few words about that. So DevOps is mainly um, it's a concept. And I can say that this is right many where in, uh, on the web as well. But uh, it's about 80% of mindset and 20% of tools and, and uh, processes. Today, I'm just going to talk about the mindset, mindset change. And this is the, the topic for, for today. So back in the context. Um, I'm working in Lanyon, in Nokia. We are having a campus of a bit more than 800 people working there. More than half of them are working in R&D, developing some uh, products for radio, 4G, 5Gs, uh, also from the cloud, from the cloud core, from the core networks. And um, in, uh, we also have a lot of uh, people, maybe 40 percent, working on the upside. That means that we have sales guys, project manager, solution engineers, maintenance, a lot of uh, organization uh, dealing with, uh, with the ops. Something very important on our campus, which is uh, quite famous now, is the garage. It's uh, something that, uh, it's an innovation platform with uh, an innovation team which is there and which help anybody from uh, who have any ideas uh, uh, regarding the innovation. So it can be related to a product, a process, an idea of anything. And it's uh, important to notice it, and we'll talk about why later on. So the story uh, started during the COPCI, so the Community of Practice for Continuous Integration. Uh, our R&D team we are, w are doing a lot of, uh, of COP. I know that with um, many, many, many campus. And, uh, I was interested with that because they were talking about continuous integration. And for me, what we are doing in Ops, it's all about integration. So I was a bit curious about what would they mean by doing uh, integration while we are doing integration in Ops. And I went there and we had a uh, discussion about it because obviously we didn't have the same, um, the same um, understanding about what, uh, what integration means. For us, integration is putting a network element in, a different, in an environment and being able to configure all of everything around to make it work. In a core network, you can have more than 100 network elements to make it work to in a standard, uh, standard environment, standard uh, pro service provider. And you, each time you uh, apply a new one or a new software release and so on, you have to adapt to everything else. And this is what we are calling integration in, on our side. While on the dev side, for them, it's much more about developing, coding, putting the last software, the last release available and uh, ready, to be, ready to be delivered. So it was fully different. So at that time, we understood that we had a fully different uh, way of, uh, of uh, thinking while we are coming from the dev and for the ops. And we had one discussion about uh, when we discussed about what we were doing. I said, for example, today we are doing a 
quite huge project, which is upgrading the database of a huge, huge customer. The database is the system where all the data of uh, your phones are stored. Each time you are trying to, to do a call, each time you do something, uh, there is some uh, request going there. So it's something which is very critical for, uh, for a network. And we were discussing about that, and I was saying that we just had an upgrade to do on this uh, huge database, and it, we had a plan for several months for that. And my colleagues from the R&D who were st staying, staying there and were uh, listening to me, they said, but how does it come that you could spend several months to do an upgrade of a database while we are doing the same one, we are building it, we are validating it in our labs in several hours? It's true that we didn't have at all the same objective. For them, the objective is to deliver a, ca a code fast as planned, while for us, it's to keep it the same up and running. We do, in hubs, have to face a lot of constraints which wasn't planned during the development in R&D. Uh, our constraints, for example, are that we are having some uh, uh, geo-relevant uh, networks, we, the customer is always requesting us to work during the night. But during this time frame of the night, because it's less risky, if there is an impact on the subscribers, there is less impact during the, the night, of course. It's important to, to consider that the customer will allow us to work only during few hours. We have few hours before to do the backup, to do the test, then we can operate, then we have to, to plan some tests, then we have to have in case of a rollback, we have to have a time frame window as well. So at the end, and the customer will allow us to work only on a few, on a small part of the database, just to limit the risk. Um, so at the end, by being able to work only a few hours and during two nights during the week, we arrive at a planning of several months, while in the lab it was just a few hours. What was very important is that we didn't have the same mindset, the same objective, and the same. We are working on the same product, and we don't have. This, we are not facing the same issues, and we consider that it was an issue that, from a early perspective, we are not taking in account the the um, the constraints that we are facing in operation. And then, after this talk. Um, I had an interesting one with one of my colleagues who was leading a R&D team. This guy was leading a team which was developing, um, rebuilding, I would have to say, a product. This product is a tool which is accessing to the database we were talking about before. And I was telling him, I, I don't understand, you are telling me that you are leading a team of R&D guys which is developing a tool, but for me this tool is just a old windows like, you know, old Windows NT, uh, windows with uh, some script behind. It was just an old-fashioned product, and I didn't understand why and what we could do to this, to this product. While for him, it was just a complete new, a very, ch a very good challenge. It was very interesting for him. He, was, he had a lot of enthusiasm to do it, because he was working on Docker, microservices, cloud, Jenkins. He was at the top of the technology, and uh, he was very proud of it, and for me, we understood that there is a wall between us. And it's a pity because we are now working in the same building in our campus. Uh, and we are working very close. Our both team are working on the same product. And we have two different visions of, of the same product. I even didn't know that, this, uh, that they were rebuilding it and having uh, this, this uh, new one. So this said, we consider that it wasn't possible anymore to continue like that two teams working on the same product in the same company, not knowing exactly what happened, what is going to be done, and not exchanging enough. When they said, we said, okay, now uh, for sure we have to change on the new model. We were, of course, up to date, and we knew that uh, DevOps was a model which would probably fit to our needs, because DevOps is exchange, DevOps is feedback, DevOps is uh, uh, discussing everybody together. And we said that we probably should go, should, should go there. And while uh, discussing, we said, okay, we have, to, we have to go there, and now we have, to, we, have to, we have to think about it. And before 
going a bit uh, further, I'm going to ask you to take your smartphone again and uh, to answer to this, uh, to this question. Which world would define DevOps for you? Even if you have just just try and just uh, write everything which is uh, coming in your mind, and uh, I'm going to to show you the, the result here through. It it was very um, interesting for us to discuss about it together because again his view, my view, and our expectation about DevOps was. Uh, What's quite uh, interesting, we were seeing a lot of uh, of uh, possibilities there, um, as we can see here on the. So each time you are working, uh, writing a word, you can rewrite one if you believe that it is a, a good one. You can even vote for the for the for the word if you want with your with the website, and we'll see that. Okay, there is some words which are coming more than the others, and which is normal, but I should probably go maybe to, the, to all of them. Okay, that's quite interesting. So I can see that here we are having a lot of words which we were having when we discussed about it. Cooperation, collaboration, deployment, automation, culture, all these words were after, I would say, 20, 30 minutes, we were discussing about DevOps, we definitely think that for us, it would be a kind of, uh, of dream where everything is working well. So let me let me come back to my slides. Thanks for these proposals. I will just keep a smart snapshot for our... And there is also some people who doesn't know. I can see that, okay. Um, so when we are discussing, we definitely saw that DevOps was going to solve all of our issues. From Dev and from Offside, we believe that DevOps was fantastic. It's just a model which everybody working, working, and its ends, helping each other, working in the same direction. So with a blue sky, everybody is happy. That's nice. It's just, it's just a perfect thing. But now it's very good to think about it and to have a dream like that. Now we said, OK, we have a big dream. It's good. But now what should we do? So we should act now, and to act, we should start. And so we are wondering uh, to what stage we should start and how we should go to this, uh, to, to this, uh, to this project. And uh, we went again to see uh, our uh, colleagues from uh, the innovation platform, Le Galerage, in, uh, in uh, Lanyon, and uh, we were discussing about how to go to DevOps from the status that we are, and, uh, how to go from our project. Our project was to say, OK, we are having one product here, one development team here, which is quite small and it's good. We are having the operation teams. On this product, we should try to do this uh, DevOps. And we were wondering uh, how we should go and uh, how to start. And uh, our, uh, our, uh, our um, I would say, strategy was to say, OK, we did it by the past through R&D. When we tried to apply agile methodology, we went to different uh, way by uh, showing some slides, doing some trainings, introducing peop uh, agile to people. But it didn't really work. It took a long time for people to be uh, really to believe in it and to be adapted to it. So uh, we were thinking about, about a new way to do it. Uh, I would have to say first that for our internal project, the very good point was that we were having a very good environment. Uh, we were having our two teams working together, and one thing which is important is that so we are having a lot of uh, enthusiasm, small teams working together, we are collocalized, we are having uh, the, su the support of our leaders, 
And the good thing, as you see, is that we are celebrating the success all together, our Nokia success with our customer and so on. So this is a good point that we are having in Lanyon. And with our both teams from Dev and Ops. Now, sometimes it happens that you have one guy who is saying that, hey, it's impossible to, uh, to, de to this product is bugged, I can't use it. And then the guy from, from Dev, uh, you know, the one which is uh, when he's not happy when you are telling him that uh, his Swiss doesn't smell good. What? What are you saying? And then we are having some trouble because so the fight is starting between Dev and Hobbs, and uh, it's often like that. It's always the fault of the other one. Uh, one is saying that the product is bugged, the other one is saying that the, uh, the guy doesn't know how to use it. So it's, uh, it's always like that. So the point is how to change. We cannot stay like we cannot work with this kind of mindset. So, the main point, like to go for DevOps, is to change the mindset. Now, how to change it? And as said, we couldn't go to the traditional way of uh, showing some slides, just asking people to go in the same room and uh, discuss together, work together. It doesn't work. It's not enough. So, while discussing with uh, our, our innovation team, they they made one proposal. The proposal was to discover what DevOps is through a game. I said, what? A game? Yeah, yeah. She told me, you should try to go for Lego. Playing with Lego to introduce something to the, to the teams? Are you serious? And then she said, yes, yes, you should try. It's very interesting. And at the end, it was uh, very interesting that uh, uh, Lego is providing some serious gaming. So they are providing you some kit to uh, to develop and to initiate some uh, some some work with uh, with your teams, and we we tried that and it was very uh, very impressive. I have to say, it's fun, it's quick, it's efficient. So basically, what we did is that you are having one dev team here, which is uh, working on his side, uh, and which have some uh, product to produce with some timeline, with some uh, KPIs, like in the real world, and. It is the same for uh, our ops team, who also have some KPIs and uh, some constraints to, to follow. So, um, while we are doing this such, um, uh, such things, I have to say that at the end of uh, one hour and a half, it was impressive to see how much all these guys were convinced that DevOps was a good way to work. I would never have imagined it before. And that was the first key, the first part, the first stone, which was very important to reach, to change the mindset, to open the mind, and to, to uh, uh, make people be uh, open to the change. And that was very, very important. So this done, now that the mindset was open, we had to continue and to work and to set up some uh, activities, and we still we couldn't say them, Okay, now work together. Then now that you're convinced that DevOps is good, you should work together. It would not work again. So we had to help them and uh, to set up some uh, work definition for that. So we decided to do a creativity session. During this session, we had several steps. The first step is that we asked them, Dev team and Ops team, each one on the paper board, we asked them to write what would be their ideal product. We are still in telecommunication, not on the products that they are working on every day, but what would be their ideal product in telecommunication? So they could think about anything, the end user, whatever. So many things came out, and after this, each team had to go to the other one and to explain why it would be the ideal product for them. And uh, obviously, there is a lot of difference between R&D ideal product and Ops ideal product. So each of them had to explain to the other team, and it was uh, very, um, very interesting for them because they were okay, more open and, uh, after the, the Lego for DevOps session, and they were listening really, and uh, it was an interesting change that we had during this session. This done, we said, okay, now that we are coming from the start of the ideal product, we have to come back to our own product. And now, the question was individually. Everybody had to take some post-it and to write on the post-it 
everything that could be done to improve the product they were working on. That means that in the room there, you had some people from Dev, so the product manager, the solution engineer, the care team, the developers, uh, the leaders. Everybody was there. And everybody was writing what, will be, what should be improved on the product to uh, have it better. And um, we were quite surprised about the result because we had a lot, a lot of ideas. And for the first time, it was coming from the, from the bottom. All the ideas were collected, and we asked them to go and to take all the post-it, one after one, to put the post-it on the wall and to explain why he would like this evolution on the product. At the end, we get a huge backlog. A huge backlog, so here you, are, you can see all the post-it. If you cannot read it, it's normal. Huh? It's because I didn't want you to, to read everything. But you can see that we put it all the post-it on the wall, and we, try, we started to um, organize them in a lot of uh, categories. So these categories are quite common and could be adapted to any other product, I would say. But uh, uh, here, what we did is that with all of these uh, categories, we were able to know where we should go for our product within our team from the bottom up. And then we decided, OK, we cannot go through all of this evolution. It's too much. It would be uh, it just uh, not uh, realistic. So we have to come back and to say, to, to make a kind of a ranking between all of these uh, ideas. So we first started to think about, we should try to know where we have an influence on it. And so we were putting all these categories and trying to see where we have an influence. So there is a lot of categories where we have the full control. It's good because we are, we are having on our own campus locally in the team which was involved there in the, in the exercise, we were having a lot of uh, almost all the uh, counterparts of, uh, of the product. So it was very obvious that we had a good, good change to, to, to get there. And we have also a lot of things in the influence zone and not so many out of our control. So it was a good basis. Now, to select the first one, and the main one, we decided to go uh, on to uh, classify them by the impact on the effort. By doing that, we quickly managed to uh, separate the three main categories. So internal communication, business model, customer feedback. Uh, we had some uh, work group for that with some people from, uh, from Dev and from, uh, and from Ops. And um, they were... Uh, able to work, and uh, after two months, they were able to provide us some very good results. So we had uh, several quick wins. One of the first one was regarding the prototype, because before, in our old model, uh, when the prototype was done, it was a full internal R&D process. Now, at the stage of the prototype, uh, we as the ops are invited, and um, we are able to, uh, to discuss with uh, and to, to be involved in the, in the prototype um, process. So that means that we are able to give a feedback to our colleagues. And this feedback is very important because it um, allows us to have a much quicker and efficient product uh, because it's more we are talking there about uh, usability, about uh, look and feel, about uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot of topic, and it's very, very important. The next one is about documentation. Documentation by the past, in our old model, was to say that R&D was providing the documentation. Documentation was going, was, av was available. Then, if we had anything to say, we had to go from a uh, process, which is to say you have to write a ticket to say that the documentation is not good, the process is going to be treated, then they will uh, put that in the, in the backlog, then it will come back, it will be done, and after several weeks, you are having the modification done. But during all that time, you had to rebuild your own documentation to work, because if we talk about the installation and commissioning documentation, for example, you cannot just wait several weeks to have it done. So we were rebuilding it and redoing it, and it's not efficient. So now, 
the quick wins that we have is that we are having a feedback quickly uh, and in advance uh, regarding the documentation and we are much more efficient. The next one is Live My Life. It's very interesting to see that before we didn't have any R&D guy working on, on this product, developing the product, spending any night on the customer environment using the product. So this is what we decided to, go to do, and uh, it was uh, very good for us to see that uh, for anyone who is uh, uh, developing the product, to see how it is used, to see uh, what are the pain points of in terms of usability again, or in terms of, uh, of uh, interference, or a log uh, about... Uh, uh, any any topics of uh, usability and um, they are coming back in R&D with a different way of mind and they are not building it at all any, uh, at the same with the same ideas and before not with the same objective because now they are able to be in the place of the guy who are going to use it and this is very very important. In terms of requirements, we are now um, working again at the start earlier in the stage when we are talking about new features of this product, Ops is coming, is involved during the sessions, and can say on the voice, is, uh, is we can have the Ops voice there during the requirements. So even before that the product is uh, at the first stages, we are, we are involved and we are giving some, uh, some ideas. Last point is the feature used. Now we are giving the feedback that we believe that there are several features which are not used. In fact, they have been developed, they are there, but we don't see any uh, needs for it. But the point is that each time we were developing a new release of the product, we were still getting this feature up to date, and we had an effort in R&D to keep them up to date because they believe that it was used and that it should be there. And now we are working on it to reduce the number of uh, features which are, which are not used. Okay, now, if you could come back to your smartphone, I would like to ask you one uh, question for all the guys, because we have mainly dev guys there. I would like you to, uh, to give your feedback and to, gi to say how many features are rarely or infrequently used in products. I'm sure that it could be interesting to see your view for that. <laughs> there is no trap. You can answer whatever you're seeing. Ah, it's not bad. So nobody, still there is 30% of the people who believe that only 50%, oh, 50% are thinking that it's 80%. You are right. It's good. So you guys from, uh, from Dev are convinced that 80% of the features developed are not used. Congratulations. <laughs> Uh, it's impressive to see that. So, in fact, my, my numbers here are coming from a, a study which, uh, which appeared a few years ago, and uh, it was about just internal product and four internal products. It's not uh, numbers which are covering all the products in the world. I don't have this, this study. But uh, it's interesting to see that when you think about your, even your smartphone or your, uh, uh, your office uh, 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 applications, how many features you are using in it? It's impressive. That's probably why you are also saying that uh, uh, most of you are believing that 80% of the product are of the feature are, are rarely or infrequently used. So this is something that also need to be need to be tackled because it's a lot of effort, a lot of cost, a lot of money when you build it, and then each time you have to upgrade and to to work on on your product, you have to again to um, to make some effort to, ma to maintain them while it's not necessary. So this is coming to my third part of my presentation. I should switch.
So in that part, I'm going to tell you a bit about a successful try that we had with uh, one of our uh, customers. The point is now, uh, I'm not going to give you the name of the customer for commercial reason, and I'm not going to give you some technical details, even if most of you would probably be very interested. Uh, but I'm going to try to illustrate uh, my customer and, the and his needs. So my customer is uh, famous, as famous as my cousin, I guess. Uh, here is my, my customer. So my customer is uh, the famous uh, coyote trying to, to reach the to reach beep beep, the, the roadrunner. And this customer was in trouble uh, because he wanted to uh, use a new product which was in the market. And um, the point is that he wasn't able to adapt this new feature in on his own uh, current network. So it was a real issue for him because he was saying that he could bring new hardware and everything, but this, this wasn't what, uh, what he wanted to do because uh, he wanted to work on the user end and he wanted to adapt to what was uh, the, the current um, the current setup of his network. So he wanted to find a new way. The point is that he wanted to have a fast, efficient, innovative way of proposal. You know that in our standard model, we are calling it a waterfall. Uh, normally, when a customer is raising a request, you go to the, you go to the sales guy, the sales guy go to the pre-sales, then to the architecture, then they are discussing. After the discussion, we are coming back to the customer with a proposal. Then he's giving some feedback. Then we are coming back to us. And then the development is done. And after several uh, weeks or months, it depends, we are coming to a situation where we are developing and we are providing a solution, which we expect is going to be the good one. But in our cases, the time constraints of our customer didn't allow us to go through all this process. So we had to go with a new way, a new way of work. And we set up a workshop with them. So we had guys from, uh, from uh, R&D, so developers, we had, guy, we had architects, we had a uh, validation guy uh, from uh, both teams, we had some validation guys, some uh, engineering team. So just a, a setup of uh, 10 people with uh, key, key players there, key stakeholders, and uh, we are discussing and we said, Okay, we will not manage to do it in, in on time if we follow the, the, the current process. So maybe we should go to a new way of work together. And um, it was very interesting to see that. So our customer also uh, heard about DevOps before. And uh, he also wanted to go through, but he didn't have any experience. And he wanted to, to experiment and to go through a short um, a, a try, I would say. And uh, we all decided to go for that. So. Again here, it's a lot a question of mindset. We were all discussing, and uh, during our first workshop, the most important thing was that we had the same mindset, the same objective, and the trust between our teams. So we went to the next step saying that, OK, we need to work, but we also need to set up some, uh, some uh, rules to, to work together, and to make some plan, and to get our objective to, to find a solution for you. And the one of the first thing was that we said, OK, if we want to reach everything, we had a lot of requirements. And we had something like 20 requirements to, to get at the end. And uh, we said, OK, we cannot uh, go to and tackle, try to tackle everything in parallel. It's not going to work. And um, so we decided to make a ranking of uh, all this uh, requirement stuff. And we, we started to tackle the, the first ones. And while progressing, we, each time we were progressing and uh, trying, we saw that obviously we were, by tackling the one requirement, it has an impact on the other one. And the ranking was evaluating almost every day. And um, this is uh, how we, we continue to work and to, to progress on this. Uh, to focus on the essential was always to try to focus on the first uh, requirement on, on the top ranking list. One rule was to say try and try and try. 
Even if you fail, you fail, you fail, you have to try and try and try. It's not something common. It's not something common when we are dealing with uh, customer on, s on provider. Because most of the time, you don't want to show that you can fail. You want to show something which is working right from the first time. And in that particular um, session, we wanted to say, okay, we are all going to work together. We are setting a lab just for us, putting the team in, and let them work together. And we should not be ashamed to fail. We should fail all together and uh, try all together on success all together. This is very important in the mindset. So it's critical to have the trust on the same mindset with everybody. We also, you know, in our traditional world, there is uh, a lot of uh, report to be done, a lot of time to be spent there. You almost have a project manager which is doing a lot of this. And for that, we said that we should be more pragmatic and uh, half an hour will be enough to make all the report. And we didn't want to go more, and we managed to, to, to uh, focus on it and, to, man and to, to get to it, to get more time to, uh, to test, to try, and to, to work on it. Requirement definitions. So this is also where we, uh, uh, we were... Uh, it was very important because sharing the requirement between both team, customer and developers and architects, was very important. Uh, it's clearly the base of uh, all the works, and uh, if this is not clear at the start, it's, uh, it's going to be, uh, to be a mess at the end. And uh, we have a lot of uh, examples for that. But now, during this phase of uh, DevOps uh, uh, try, uh, the requirement was were evaluating uh, and uh, a lot of ideas were, were coming. So even if the customer was coming with his initial requirement, at the end, we change most of it. And we change most of it, but we manage to get and um, to focus on the same uh, target. So it was interesting for them also, for the customer, to understand that even if th when they are asking for some requirements, it's always very interesting to interact uh, with us to, to change it and to have, to have the, the right one. Common light dog, it's, uh, you know, when you we are having uh, this contract with our customer, we are embedded in an uh, obligation to have a lot of templates, uh, templates which are quite heavy. You have to have uh, word documentation, you have a process of validation, you have uh, to, it's quite heavy in terms of documentation uh, when, um, when, you, when you have in a, full, uh, uh, a full contract signed and when you are working in a standard model. So for this one, we decided that, okay, as soon as we validate it all together, the small team of 10 people, as soon as the document is validated, whatever the form is, it, it is going to be okay at this stage. And um, it's important to, have to, to be much more uh, focused on the, on the development and on the try. So sometimes just the architecture was uh, on a VSD, on, on a PowerPoint or whatever, as soon as everybody validated it, it's enough. The test plan was just an Excel sheet instead of having a lot of uh, documents and tools and to around it. And so we just decided to focus on a prototype. We didn't want to go for a full solution, which was industrialized. Uh, we just said that we want to go for a prototype and uh, believing that if the prototype could be tested in the real world, we will then come back later on with a full solution industrialized, but that the prototype development was, uh, was our target. So all these uh, rules and outcomes and targets that we set up from the start and during the, the development was, uh, was very, very, very important. So during all this experience, we had... Uh, it was new for the customer and uh, new for some of our, uh, of our guys. And uh, it was uh, very impressive to see all the enthusiasm that they had all together to, uh, to work, to exchange, to try, to discuss. It was like if everybody was working in the same team. And uh, it was very, very uh, good satisfaction for everybody there. Now, at the end, what uh, was interesting is that, of course, we catch the roadrunner, we catch the target. 
I can believe me, it's quite difficult to find this kind of uh, of draw. Huh? So it's not a lot of time where the coyote is reaching the the road runner. So uh, our result is that now we do have R&D specification ready. You know that normally in our standard model you have uh, you are developing the solution, as I said before, based on the customer requirement, on which is some based on some assumptions. Here, at the end of the sessions, we were having the custom the R&D specification fully ready because it was working. With the, the prototype is there and is working, so most of the job is done. So we uh, we are now ready to go to the uh, second step, which is a commercial discussion, and it can start on a very good basis because from this step we definitely know on both sides what we had to do. It was very if, uh, easy to uh, define the cost. There is less, less risk. There is no, no risk of uh, interpretation and uh, everything is clearly defined and it's, it's very interesting. Um, after the, 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 the try, uh, the customer came and said, you know, I'm sure that one year ago if you had started it, it will take at, at least, with our uh, other model, it will take at least one year to reach the target that we get here in four months. And in four months, people were not working full time on it. It was a kind of uh, best effort. So it was very impressive for them to see that with this new approach, new way of work, they will be able to, uh, to reach uh, the target. Uh, one very interesting point is that uh, when the, the CSO of the customer was uh, doing his uh, yearly event, uh, he was talking about this specific experience. It was a very good, uh, it had a very good uh, resonance uh, within their teams and um, with this uh, DevOps uh, approach, DevOps uh, mindset and uh, DevOps test, it was a very, it was not only the technical part which was interesting for them, it was also this new way, this new model, new way of work. And that was uh, very good. So, the success key for all of this, for me, it's uh, the trust, again, the trust between everybody, all the stakeholders, and the common mindset that they should have. So as soon as everybody has the same mindset, the same tightening, going in the same direction, it could work. But uh, again, if we are coming back to the first slide, we, we, we are coming from a world and an organization which uh, is not always prepared for that. At the end, um, uh, another success key was that we have a proximity of, uh, of lab and teams. Everybody was working all together. The communication was quite easy, I have to say, because they were working in the same lab, everybody around the same table. So from a human point of view and uh, exchange point of view, it, I have to say that it's easy and uh, it was uh, very, very efficient. Small quad, squad, because I'm convinced that what we did here with uh, 10 people, 10 people at all, and then talking with other ones, of course, in their, uh, in their uh, own organization, but 10 which was... Uh, part of the central team. Uh, a small choir like that, it's uh, easier to make them work uh, than if you try to make a squad and uh, having uh, hundreds of people working together, you can even not put them, everybody in the same room. So uh, I'm convinced also on the that it was easier like that. So we are still at the start uh, and now it's uh, to be continued because we managed to start it, to, to do... Uh, our first experience was internally with uh, dev, ops, to change the mindset. We managed to do it. It was a success internally. We went to our customer. We, we did a try with them, a sh sh short, uh, short try, I have to say. But still, it's good to, uh, to go for that, to know that it is possible, and uh, to understand that we are at the first uh, stage of... Uh, uh, the evolution going to DevOps. So there is uh, now in our company and in others a lot of uh, things which are going in parallel in terms of process and tools. But definitely we, we need to, uh, to continue to work with our teams to have them ready in their mind and uh, to, to work uh, with a new model, a new way 
of work. That's all, folks, for me for today. And I'm now ready for any question and answer. Any questions? Hi, my name is Kasia, and I have one question. In one of your slides, you were giving the points uh, like a keys uh, to success that um, dev and ops, we should work together on the requirements, uh, building the prototype, and one of them was uh, live my life. And my question is, uh, what to do, what ways uh, we can use that dev will actually live the life of ops? What comes to my mind is to let an R&D representative to travel to customer side and to work together with operations teams so that they really feel what they do, what they need to be careful about. Do you see any other way to make this point happen, that dev lives life of ops? No, exactly. This is exactly what we, what we are doing now. We didn't do it before, but now we are doing it. And we are now having the, the guy from R&D who are going on site during the night close to the ops guy who knows his work or know, know his daily works. The guy of R&D is just like uh, to uh, just there to to look and feel and he's coming back to his office with a different uh, uh, different view of the product, of the usage, with the new ideas of how to uh, develop it and uh, what could be the good thing to be to be uh, implemented for a better usage. So it's exactly what you what you are saying. Uh, it's uh, live my life is uh, to it's not to replace is to have R&D coming with ops and uh, working together to to understand uh, the usage usage of uh, of the product exactly. Thank you. Any additional questions? So the approach that you showed is very similar to the uh, agile approach in software development. So mm -hmm. what's what's the difference and uh, how wha what do you think that these two uh, philosophies uh, approach uh, each other? The how do they how do they correlate with uh, each other? I would say that uh, agile is. Uh first step which is very important. In our R&D mode, we, you start about uh, continuous integration, continuous development, and then you can go to DevOps. It's a, um, a kind of uh, progression. And Agile definitely is a, a way of, uh, of being more, uh, um, to, to being, being efficient, and which is implemented in our R&D already. And we are also starting and uh, using in some project the same, uh, the same tools that we are using in Agile, like uh, Jira, uh, GreenHopper, and this kind of uh, way of uh, using um, uh, Agile methodology for, for operation. But uh, mainly, I have to say that uh, for the moment, uh, Agile was used for R&D and not in Ops. But uh, definitely, Agile is part of it, it's definitely. Do we so have more questions? Or here in the front? I will give Hi. Um, my question is, uh, you, you, you showed a wall in a lot of your slides uh, between the, the ops team and the dev yeah. team. Um, do you see that wall as uh, only uh, you know, culture and, and different office, or is it a wall of, of meta information? Because like when when I when I see problems in documentation, I go look at the unit tests, right? But uh, when something gets to ops, you often don't know, like how to trace that all the way back to tests. Uh, do you do you see a problem in in information flow from dev to ops? Yeah, uh, in fact, the wall is as you said. It's more. Uh, it's also a, a culture. It's a coming from the history, because uh, first we had some dev, and as you said, uh, they're going, giving it to the ops, and when the ops takes the baby, it's the responsibility to make it on each time. So now, the point is that we, 
we clearly face an issue why it's going too, too fast and we cannot follow it like that anymore. So we have to be much more uh, involved with each other and we have to break this wall and to have everybody mixing, discussing together and being involved all together. It's uh, from our experience on this, uh, on this test, it's uh, much more efficient, much more quicker. But yeah, it's coming from the history and now we have to change it and to go through a, a new mindset. So it's going to be much more efficient for somebody who is coming out of uh, his uh, study and coming in a company where this is already implemented than for, for us where we have to change the, the mindset, of course. But uh, yeah. Okay, so I have a question because yeah. I'm also from Nokia and it's very interesting stuff what you're doing there. Uh, how do you see it scaling all to all the other sites as well? Do you have some idea? Or do you have some plans? Yeah, I think that there is also tomorrow uh, there is a talk about about that, and we are having a lot of uh, there is some you know as I say DevOps is mainly probably for me eighty percent of uh, of a mindset and uh, culture, while twenty percent of tools and process. There is also a lot of tools and process we which are implementing. We are also having now some uh, real concrete. Uh, deployment of DevOps with some of our uh, of our customer officially. With uh, it was at the start uh, in the in the contract and uh, in the common agreement uh, officially. While here it was the start and uh, some some try, and uh, so now it's uh, it's coming. Um, it's difficult to predict how much is going to be in if it is going to be. Uh, in everywhere in the next in the one year or in uh, three or five years, but anyway, we are quickly seeing that we need to go there. And there is also an impact with the technology. With more, the cloud is going to be implemented. It's a low, uh, the f the it's easier in terms of tools and delivery to to do it and to go through it. So, I'm convinced that we'll go there. Sounds good. Any more questions from the audience? Oh, I see one hand there. You said you use the Lego for uh, changing yeah. mind mindset. Yeah. But I'm curious what what was the challenge? What did they <laughs> have to build? It's interesting, but in fact, I didn't want to give uh, too much detail because it's very important to to do it and uh, not to uh, to tell all the story of uh, what is in the in the game, because otherwise you will lose the benefits the the, the, the day you will, you will try it. So actually, I'm going to do it. Uh, one or two sessions in two days in Nokia here in uh, Rotio. And the point is that what I can tell you is that you are putting in the same condition than you are in your real life. So you are getting some constraints, some uh, things to build with your hands and with your, the Lego bricks, which is fun. <laughs> but in other hand, you also have uh, some uh, KPIs, you have the uh, you have a time to, to produce it and uh, you are quickly in the game saying ah, I need to, to produce it and I need to do that and uh, you have some, like in Agile world, you are giving some um, the same uh, uh, some storyboards and a backlog with some storyboards which you have to provide and then uh, Ops team is there and uh, have to build it with uh, constraints and so on. So it's really like in a real world and uh, this is the setup and I cannot tell more than that, but it's very interesting and very, very uh, efficient. We did it uh, several times and uh, in many different uh, countries and many different places with different guys. Uh, we even try it with only managers. We try it with only developers. We try it with dev and hubs. We try it with many different uh, setup. And each time we had different results, different view, but it was always very efficient on everybody where coming out of the uh, of the session with uh, uh, a good learning and very happy to have uh, discovered what what it could be so 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 fast and with so so fun it's serious gaming efficient sounds like a good way to have fun at work yes yeah Okay, you have been talking about the prototyping uh, thing that after four months yeah. you had this solid basis for yeah. the project. Yeah. Uh, from my experience, when we go into prototyping, we are covering these 80% uh, of the cases with 20% yeah. of the work, but then this last 20% takes 
four times more to develop how to ensure that our prototypes will be easy, easily uh, migrated to the full production uh, products from these prototype tools. Yeah. So in fact, in our example, the, the guy which were responsible of the, uh, who, who built the prototype, um, they are also the one who are going to industrialize it and uh, to put everything in the new feature, in the new release. And uh, they knew that uh, at the stage where they arrived, a lot of, dev a lot of codes was were already done. And they didn't, they clearly be, uh, they was able to expect and to uh, measure the effort which was supposed to be spent more than uh, to, to, to go furthermore. So we were not with a prototype which was like uh, you can see some uh, futurist car in, uh, in, uh <laughs> in Detroit or whatever, but uh, it's not like uh, for, for a car which is just uh, an imagination. It's something, uh, the prototype was already uh, almost, yeah. 80% done. Okay, any more questions from the audience? Okay, I don't see any more hands. <laughs>